guys, hello and I'm there for you all more content with my Quiz VR headsets. We're going to look at Citra VR Beta again today. I think it was back in January 2024. I looked at it last when it first came out. And it's very recently been updated, which has surprised me. With Nintendo going after Yuzu and Ryujinx, which emulates the Switch, I really thought Citra would be abandoned, but it hasn't, which is awesome. I guess the difference is, although emulation is technically legal, Emulating the Switch is a current console, and the argument is that's done more for piracy than it is preservation, whereas Citra is doing the Nintendo 3DS. That console is end of life. Nintendo have said themselves they will not repair that console anymore. It's getting more difficult to find parts to repair it. Ask me how I know. My brother broke the top screen of his 3DS, and because it's not an XL version, I'm struggling to find a replacement screen, so he can't play his 3DS games. That's where emulation comes to the rescue Although his original consoles died, the games can be preserved and we can play them on other devices. So, if you'd like to get this done, SciQuest is the way to do it. If you're new to VR, definitely check out SciQuest. We'll do links in the description of the video, pin comment below. I'm not going to cover how to set this up because it's already been done to death You know, at the start of the year. So there's no need to make the video longer than it needs to be. SciQuest is the way to go, but I'll also give you the link to their... GitHub page, so I'm pretty sure it's Amanda Watson, the name of developer, so we can see the releases there, we're up to 0.5.1, it tells us the compatibility for the Quest 2, the Quest Pro, the Quest 3, and the upcoming Quest 3S, we've got the game, so there's a hyperlink there to click for game compatibility list, and we've got the lit and the releases, so if we do releases, we can see what's new for each release, and there's an APK to download. So as long as we have that, we can manually install it with SideQuest later. Should this get cease and desisted by Nintendo, as long as we've got an APK file, we can still play our games. So the big changes really came with 0.5.0. Uh, fix the immersive VR mode on version 69+. plus. So that means the Oculus software in the headset itself, as that gets updated, it can cause issues with older software because remember, we're installing APK files that sometimes aren't really meant for the Quest. It's just like Android apps uh, that we're side loading. So if they're not specifically for the Quest, sometimes we can have problems. So it's awesome that this is developed for the Quest and they're still providing updates. There's a new user interface with Start Select and a Close Game option. So when this first came out, it was a real pain to close the games down. Uh, and get back into the menu we can do that now very easily we can adjust the position of the screens as a six degree of freedom super immersive mode too by dr beef if you don't know who that is they do some fantastic vr ports of older games like doom return to colossal wolfenstein stuff like that these play really really well in vr they're old games so they go really really cheap you should definitely check them out if you're new to vr so menu visibility we can hide the menu with the left menu button on our controller so we've got some known issues that the head it will crash if you put your headset to sleep when you're using the vulcan api um, we've got no box bounding box when moving lower panels so lower and upper panels can intersect so yeah, you can accidentally overlap the screens if you're not careful so yeah 17th of the 2nd 2024 so that was you know, the initial release Right, so let's head over to that games compatibility tab so saying so to look up a rating so we'll go to the very bottom i'm using the quest 2 so i'll pick that tab but you might be using the quest 3 or the pro the 3s i doubt will have its own tab because it's basically a quest 3 they've just got lower resolution and it uses the same lenses as the quest 2 rather than pancake lenses of the quest 3 so we go over to the left this might be difficult for you to read but far left is the game title so you can look up games, see if they've been tested, see the region, see their compatibility for the Citra emulator that would be on PC, but then we've got the Citra VR compatibility in case they're different. So in a nutshell, what we're looking for is purple for perfect, green for great, yellow is okay, but I mean that's playable, but probably not a great experience. So we're shooting for green or purple, and then we've got a recommended tab, you know, yes or no, maybe, who submitted the report? who's tested it and any notes that they wanted to add you know saying it probably plays better at one times resolution or you know you can push this one to two times resolution what have you just little tips and tricks to help you get the best experience for each game so this is super super helpful 
to help us out. So let's actually load up the emulator itself. So when we go into our library, it usually shows absolutely everything we have. But when we side load apps, they don't show here. We need to go into the unknown sources. If we sort it by A to Z, for me, that's put Citra VR at the very top. So I can give that a click and let it load. Now, if you do this for the first time, you might get some warnings. It will say it wants to access your storage, wants to access your camera or your microphones. Don't panic. That's perfectly normal. It's, it needs these permissions. It needs to access storage to access the game files. It needs to access your cameras if you've got the Quest free and you want to use the color cameras for the pass through to do like a mixed reality experience. It needs to access the cameras. So don't panic just to prove it. You need to point it to your user folder and the folder where you're going to store your Nintendo 3DS games. So we've got a settings tab here. We can set up a gamepad and graphics API where it's Vulkan or OpenGL. Tinker around with things to get games playing a little bit better. I've only put a couple of games on. So let's open up Mario Kart 7. And we can have a look at the changes. So we've seen the bottom screens popped up. We've got menus, main, position and stats. We've got our start selects as well as the close game button. That's new. That's really, really helpful. Just going to use the trigger. I know I don't have a me character. That's fine. So to me, I mean, this top screen will look like I'm sat in front of a I don't know, 42 inch TV, but it is in 3D. Mario looks closer to me than Bowser when Luigi's way at the back. And the actual title text for the game looks closer than Mario. I get this 3D effect is very, very cool. We've got our lower screen there, so we can do the position. So it's telling me to press and hold my index trigger. And I can move that up a little bit if it helps me. I can use the thumbstick to move it away or closer to me, whatever we like. We can do the depth adjustment. So that's what I've done with the thumbstick. We'll do the horizontal movement as well. We can flip between that and reset it back to normal. Got stats so we can do our frame time. We want that to be as low as possible. You know, that's latency. We've got our frames per second, emulation speed, all this stuff listed. So the thing to keep in mind, okay, yeah, I'm using the Quest 2. It's not as powerful as a Quest 3. But even if a game says it's great or perfect, it still needs to build shaders. You might see some little bits of stuttering here and there when you first play a game. When you've played it a few times, it's built up these shaders. They're there at hand, and those stutters will disappear. So because I've played this at least you know, a handful of times, I'm expecting this to run pretty well, even on the older Quest 2. Let's just do a little bit of gameplay. We'll do a Grand Prix, 150cc. Louis, uh, Yoshi will do. Toad Circuit. Right, so I'm just going to use the touch controllers in my hands. Uh, the A button on my right controller is going to be accelerate. We use the grip button to jump or hold it to drift around the corners. My left controller, that grip will do the pickups, special attacks, and we'll use the thumbstick to drive, change direction. So same first race. It is very, very cool to see this in 3D. Sadly, TVs have really stopped doing that, which is a shame. I really enjoyed it. I mean, back with the Xbox 360, I think I've said this before. What people didn't realize was the TV was expecting you to watch a movie in 3D. So, what was happening is we were trying to play games in 3D, and the TV thought it was a film and it was locking it to 24 frames per second, which is garbage. It's not very playable for games. So, people thought, oh, this is terrible. It just doesn't you know, help the technology get adopted if it's only for films so yeah I was constantly setting my Xbox to 720p and that was giving me you know, the good frame rate and then my brother was changing it back to 1080p I was like what are you doing dude you don't know what you're doing leave it alone get your own Xbox there's a reason why I do what I do so yeah. I mean not everybody's a standard nerd a geek into all of this stuff but it does help if you take an interest. Oh, been wiped out. I've got some turbo boosts now. We'll give that a go. Trying 
try and get rid of these as we get up to the next set of cubes. So maybe there's some slight stuttering, but I mean it's very, very playable. And the fact I'm doing this all in a VR headset is very, very cool. So let's have a look at the bottom screen, see who's behind me. I'll ditch that shell. Leave that on the apex. Try and trip someone up. Boost. Yeah, and we finish first place. So we don't need to see that end. We can just do the the close game. And we see I've got Legend of Zelda there. We can give that a quick load. Now I'll be honest with you. I'm not the biggest Nintendo fan. I'm a Sega boy. It just so happens my brother had the 3DS. So we've got a handful of games. Well, it just so happens that they are compatible and they do play, which is good. So just give this a few seconds, make sure it loads. There we go, bottom screen's come to life. There's the Triforce logo. Cool. Yeah, Nintendo 2013. Press A. I've got a save file there. Begin. A little bit of a stutter there. Yeah, so there's Link running around. So, yeah, as I say, I'm not a big Nintendo fan. I've got no intention of playing this from start to finish, but I'm sure many of you are. Be like my brother, your Nintendo 3DSs are broken and you can't get them fixed. You can't afford to get them fixed, but you do have a Quest headset. You can enjoy these games in 3D, or at least some of them anyway. So just remember, emulation is never as good as having the device itself. And we have to have realistic expectations. Yeah, so let's let's close that down. Covered, I think, the main differences. Uh, those of you that got the Quest 3, obviously you can do the color pass through and stuff like that. And there's a super immersive mode. I think it does the screen like 180 around you and stuff like that. Um, that's probably pushing my headset to its limit. So let's leave the video there, guys. Have a great day. Have a great evening, whatever it is you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.